Australia has some unique characteristics um, around AI and uh, AI adoption um, compared to the rest of APAC, um, too, in fact. The first is that Australia has been extremely focused um, on, let's say, process optimization and optimizing, optimizing the way that they do business. Um, this is around either uh, RPA technologies has have been quite high or um, asset optimization, et cetera, have been a real focus in the Australian market. The uh, rest of APAC tends to focus more on uh, customer use cases. And so a lot of focus on uh, customer interaction, customer understanding, and, and business process driven by customer options. The second area that um, uh, AI trend in Australia that's been um, uh, and most recently uh, quite strong is um, diving into the uh, cloud technologies and moving very quickly away from the uh, on-premise technologies. And um, that recent trend has been um, particularly strong in Australia. Where is it doing well, um, especially, and or where can it do better? So Australia is doing um, extremely well in uh, uh, process, uh, robotic process ad um, adoption, and so uh, our automation. So the uh, the ability to do uh, document processing or document handling or um, our other uh, routine processes. Australia's put a lot of effort and had a lot of value come back from those sorts of exercises. And additionally, Australia has been um, in a few industries, quite a strong leader in uh, the IOT space and using, using uh, ma machine-based um, uh, information to improve say maintenance and, uh, and machine performance. So there's a few areas where Australia's done quite well in that space. Where can you do better? I think that the next stage for Australia in terms of uh, AI usage is going to be around business transformation based on, on, on the, customer, um, the, the customer interaction and the customer experience. So large parts of APAC finance in China, for example, is extremely well known for transforming the, uh, the, custom, the, the finance industry around the customer experience and the, um, and the financial transaction around the digital experience. And I think that that sort of change coming to Australia is going to be the next wave of Australian innovation. Australia has been really focused on doing digital inside the business and I think Australia is very close to uh, becoming digital outside the business. Do you think moves like uh, open banking and open data sharing uh, will actually help this, drive this in Australia? Uh, absolutely. And, um, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting topic because it's becoming more and more on the agenda every day, but it's still not quite sure exactly how it'll change the agenda, but it is definitely, definitely building momentum. Um, and that's not just in banking, but in every industry, the openness of data is becoming more and more important. Of course, that does introduce a lot of uh, jurisdictional issues, regulatory issues around privacy maintenance and around uh, data access and, uh, and the ethics of data usage in, in an open environment. So those are, those are some coming challenges for the region. Which are the use cases that is uh, defining the Australian scene? So the, um, the, the main use cases that are driving the most value are the optimization and let's say the predictive, the predictive modeling. So either asset usage is a, is a really important um, use case and then um, a, a use case that's starting to grow is all around predicting behavior and predicting outcomes. Um, and that's gonna be the, let's say the next wave of important use cases. Are there any specific uh, industries that are standing out in terms of AI adoption? Uh, well, Australia's got a pretty broad um, use of AI um, in the, the mining and industrials are very heavy into AI usage in particular. Um, financial services is using a lot of AI technologies and uh, telecommunications, of course. Maybe one area where AI really hasn't started to transform Australia yet is in the, the retail experience. That's still, um, that, um, that, uh, but that wave is coming. I think that that change is not far off that the, the 
AI technologies and the customer interaction and the retail experience is going to um, become quite strong over the next you know, what, What's stopping that, um, in the, uh, the, the, the development of that? Is it um, consumers are not ready for it? Uh, data privacy concerns? Well, there's a, uh, I, well, data privacy is a big issue and that's one area where the government can certainly add a lot of help on this in terms of digital identity, privacy and ethics um, regulations. But another part of it is that the Australian market is just really suited toward, um, toward um, uh, an experience that's uh, physical, I guess. We're quite an urban country and um, you know, quite a limited country in terms of population centers, et cetera. So the, um, the, the compelling opportunity for transformation and for change is not the same as it is in some other regions where you know, populations are, are far greater and, uh, and far more spread apart and the ability to, uh, to uh, leverage the, the digital technologies to access new markets is far, is far greater than it necessarily is locally in Australia, but those changes are coming very quickly. So in, in the report, uh, Australia does figure quite strongly in some use cases, as you've mentioned, but why does, in an, on an overall picture, AI, AI development and AI maturity, Australia is still seen as a laggard. I think a large part of that is because Australia's um, Australia's on the trailing edge of the digital transformation wave. There's very there's there's uh, only a few examples of really large digitally native companies in Australia that have really made the digital change. But I think that that is, and, and, but that is rapidly, um, the pressure is building for that to change within the region. And I think that um, that'll, that'll soon change. So that's why the report tends to find that it's a laggard in that um, the, tr the, the, the AI led transformation of business models is slower here than it is elsewhere. But that doesn't mean that AI is not used, but it's largely used in support of existing business models. Okay. And do you think labor costs is part of the problem? Uh, labor cost, not necessarily, although labor is, is um, the, the cost of labor is always an issue, but it's labor access. And particularly in the last year, year and uh, ever since the, 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 the COVID pandemic has been uh, underway, access to the sort of talent that can drive these these issues becomes more and more um, challenging for uh, every Australian enterprise. So that is that is a definite challenge, labor access. Cost goes along with that, but it's, it's the access to talent is even more challenging. How can Australian companies shift from cost containment to revenue optimization? Well, some of the answers are rather obvious, which is, focus on revenue optimizing op um, um, opportunities, you know, in the marketing space and in the sales space, that's an obvious answer. But the real challenge and the real opportunity is looking for ways to interact with your customers completely differently, to change the experience and the pattern that they have for interaction. More and more of that is happening within Australia. There's different companies like Afterpay Touch, for example, that are starting to change the way that customers behave all driven off, off um, um, a, a digital view of the world. So the, um, the change to Australia is coming and it's really around understanding and exploring the customer experience and the, and the interaction with customers. Okay. And do you see, uh, you have mentioned before that privacy and data protection is huge topics in Australia. How can actually Australian companies uh, address them right up front when it comes to AI projects? Um, the best way to address those up front is to deal with people who, are, who have experience and uh, to leverage the thoughts and learnings of people who have experienced it before. So the biggest, the, the, the most important bit of advice I can, I can give companies is to ask for help and to learn from experience. So um, addressing those up front mean considering the issues around governance and then establishing the, uh, the, the, the capabilities needed to execute against governance. Considering the issues around ethics and privacy and data usage up front so that 
policies and procedures and um, and just a general framework for considering those issues could be established up front. But it's really important to uh, leverage the learnings of others who address the challenge successfully before. How important is government support when it comes to driving AI across Australia? Well, extremely important. And um, the areas of importance that um, are around privacy regulations, around uh, digital and data exposure, um, the regulatory environment and um, and uh, the is the biggest help that the government um, can work on and um, working with industry on that is um, is job one. Okay. What must our Australian business do now, right now, to start their journey to become an AI leader? So step one is commit to using AI technologies to change the business. The opportunities to change the business are overwhelming. The way I do business today and the way I can do business tomorrow. So making the effort and making the commitment to understand how these technologies and these new ways of doing business can change my business is the most important thing to do right now. The second thing to do right now is to set myself up for success by accessing the talent and the partnerships that I need in order to leverage those opportunities and to realize those opportunities. So um, that's what Australian business can do today. So last question and a follow up to what you just mentioned. Do you see uh, companies that do not do that? Uh, are they losing out or do they face an opportunity cost or is it an exis existential cost itself? Well, at the moment, I would say it's often thought of as an existential cost because, um, because the, 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 the market is not moving extremely fast, but it's getting very close to a point where it's going to move digitally extremely quickly. And um, AI technologies are going to be at the middle of making all that happen. And so um, the, the uh, cost will very quickly mount into the... Um, the hurdle to becoming an AI company is getting greater every day. And uh, the, the gap then the challenge will only become greater. What do you think companies can do to uh, drive AI? Well, there's four things that I recommend companies do. Um, number one is they companies looking to become AI driven start small and leave nothing untouched. So look for opportunities to leverage the technologies across your business. No opportunity is too small and no area is unable to benefit from the application of these technologies. The second thing is to look for a really good balance between people and machines, is that the ability of AI to enhance and supplement um, Australian companies um, um, uh, productivity, customer interactions, cost optimizations is huge. And balancing what you do with people and the business is really important. The third thing is a challenge, but it's explore new value models, new ways to interact with your customers that AI and data and digital technologies can drive. And so these can be things that are very challenging to the way you do business today, but the businesses are behaving differently all over the world and these models are becoming ubiquitous. And it's really important that the Australian companies consider the same, the same challenges. And then lastly, is look at data modernization as a continuous loop. Staying on the front edge of data technologies, of, of um, AI technologies, and ensuring that you're always thinking of ways that you can apply the latest developments to your customers and to your business is really important to success. This is not a one-stop journey. Change has become a non-stop process and it's become extremely fast. So staying, staying aware of that and how to apply it to your business is utterly, utterly critical to success. And as, um, oh. Cognizant actually work through all four steps for, with companies as well as share knowledge from other use cases so that they can actually fast track the AI journey. Oh, absolutely. We're a very good partner in that respect. And um, one of the things that we do extremely well 
um, when in partnership with our customers is working on problems in the let's just get started and do things small and look for value. And um, the examples of driving big benefits from small projects abound. And that's one of the things in the APAC region that was really noticeable from, uh, from uh, in comparison to other, other regions is that APAC is really into the start small and drive value today perspective. And I can't recommend enough that Australian companies adopt that sort of, that sort of approach. Thank you.